All righty. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody have a good breakfast. If you didn't, there's no excuse, right? And uh, that was good. All right. My wife asked me if she could have a little peace and quiet while she cooked dinner. So I took the battery out of the smoke detector. <laughs> Ooh. My son said, I watched a guy do 50 push-ups in a row. Can you do that, Dad? I told him, I think I could probably watch someone do 100 push-ups in a row. <laughs> I used to make sandcastles with my grandfather until my dad told me to put the urn back. That's bad, isn't it? You remember that movie from, I think it was the 70s, wasn't it, Jaws? You know how they can tell the first woman that got eaten by the shark had dandruff? They found her head and shoulders on the beach. <laughs> That's bad, isn't it? I know you just ate, didn't you? Someone asked me to invest in a company that was based in Egypt. I looked into it, but it turned out to be a pyramid scheme. A grocer put on a sign that read, Eggplants, 25 cents each, three for a dollar. All day long, customers came in exclaiming, Don't be ridiculous. I should get four for a dollar. Meekly, the grocer capitulated and packaged four eggplants. The tailor next door had been watching these antics and finally asked the grocer, Aren't you going to fix that mistake on your sign? He said, what mistake? Before I put the sign up, no one ever bought more than one eggplant. <laughs> Smart. Back in 1970, Golda Meir president, visited President Nixon in the White House. Nixon, drowning in criticism of the Vietnam War, said to Golda, you have the greatest military minds in history. If I just had two of your generals, my problems would be solved. To which Golda Meir responded, funny you should say that. If I had two of your generals, my problems would also be solved. Maybe we should make a trade. And Nixon said, okay, deal. He said, I'm going to take General Dayan and General Rabin. To which Golda Meir replied, I'll take General Motors and General Electric. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history, as they say. All right, well, let's take just a minute and uh, take any prayer requests you have or blessings you want to share, and then we'll get an abbreviated lesson in today. I want to Jeff and Kurt, and uh, pray for the Werner family. Uh, Kayla gave this to me, wherever she is, there she is. Uh, they, she knows these folks, they're missionaries in India, and uh, they're under some real persecution right now, so uh, pray for them if... Uh, they're, if he's caught in the pulpit, they're going to arrest him. So, uh, very serious time. Werner, W-E-R-N-E-R. -E so, please keep the Werner family in prayer uh, for the persecution they're facing right now. All right? Somebody else? Right here, David. Well, I the pray God that he brought Isaiah Freya here, here for us. Amen. That's good. Somebody else? Mary? I uh, actually just want to thank the Lord for today, and I want to thank him that every time I'm going through something, when I talk to him about it and be completely honest and give him my heart on everything, he hears. Yes, he and does. Um, when you need peace, he'll give you peace. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to thank him for that. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's good. Yes, just, Kay Wallace. just want to praise the Lord for... All the work, the ladies and Mrs. Slayball, all the planning of the mother-daughter banquet, it was absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. That's great. Praise the Lord. It was. I wish you could have seen this auditorium, <laughs> what, it, what they had it decorated like. It was amazing. And I uh, almost wanted to just keep it up so you could, everybody could see it today, yeah. but um, all the, most of the ladies did see it. Brother Miller? Yeah, I'd like to request a prayer for, I've got a granddaughter in Florida is studying to be an optometrist, 27 years old. She was just diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Oh, okay. 
She's about halfway through the optometry uh, school. Okay. What's her name, Brother Jim? Uh, Sarah Morgan, M-O-R-G-A-N. All right. Pray for Sarah. Yes, sir. All right. Sherry? Last week we asked prayer for Rachel Napdahl, and she was diagnosed with cancer, and they told her that she had probably two weeks to live. And they found out she has... Um, numerous tumors they did an MRI and she had some leg pain and she had numerous tumors on her lumbar spine and so now they need prayer for wisdom as to how to continue and what to do sure. she has four little children the oldest is six and the youngest is two months wow yeah pray for this family and Sarah Sorry, Rachel Knapp well yeah it's not Knapp anymore is it what is it D A H L? Okay. Rachel Dahl. All right. Good morning, Jeff? Pastor. Uh, you know, I give God praises for a wonderful breakfast. And, you know, I'd like to keep Brother Andrew and, and Sarah. They, they serve the Lord hard. And, and you know, they, she's got a tumor on her brain stem. And so we'd like to keep her in our prayers. Okay. Sure will. Hello, um, I just want to praise the Lord that my brother came to me uh, recently. I and Hi. I couldn't find uh, you. No, here I am. Um, All right. Uh, my brother, who is 30 years old, came to me recently and said he wants to be baptized. I know. Um, and I t told him that uh, we could do that t this afternoon. So if he does show up, he'll be baptized this afternoon. If not, he'll do it at another time. He did ask this morning, and he did ask, pass, ask me if the, he would have to pay pastor. I said, no, you don't have to yeah. pay him anything, but pastor said a free will offering <laughs> should be given. He, he so. says, you mean he'll do it without charging anything? And I said, well, free will offerings are accepted. But, you know, I'm so, teasing now, okay? I'm teasing. So never give up. Always pray for growth. Amen. Always pray for the Lord to work in people's hearts. And so just pray with me that even now or afterwards or later on, he'll uh, have the courage to do this. Thank Amen. you. Pray he'll come this morning. That'd be great. Marie? Yeah, I want y'all to keep praying for my daughter. She's going through a lot of stuff. And uh, one of our roommates, Joe, he asked me to have prayer for him too. And uh, because he's got what they call split personalities and uh, he's having it pretty rough. Mm -hmm. So, and keep me in your prayers too. Mm -hmm. All right, Marie. Does that do it? Yes, go ahead. Jack. Grateful for the Lord. Uh, he answered my prayers about getting uh, the Fun Fest day off, so I'll, I'll be able to attend and feel like I'm part of the flock. That's and, uh, great. That, yeah, that's answered prayer. Oh, oh, happy day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Janet. Yes. I want to praise the Lord for that wonderful time that we had yesterday with all the ladies. This was beautiful, and um, all the work that went into it paid off. Even though, of course, Satan's always going to be there trying to mess everything up, but we still come the winner where we abide by him. I also want to praise the Lord for my friend Becky. She's, she was here yesterday, and yes. she's here again. This is an Amen. honor to have them. And then, of course, my two boys, Omar yes. and O'Brien, visiting and making me uh, feel like a 100% mother today. So I want to praise the Lord for that. Bet. That's great. Good to have Omar and Brian with us today. That's wonderful. One of the best gifts you can give your mom on Mother's Day is to sit with her in church. So that's a good job, fellas. Okay. I want to thank the Lord for... Our time uh, yesterday, all the ladies and, and Kathy, it was wonderful. I want to also thank the Lord for waking up this morning. Me and Jeff's going through a terrible storm with um, Chief and Scott Highland trying to kill us in our sleep. So I'd like you to pray for me and Jeff. Hopefully uh, we'll have a house soon, you, too. And you got your lays on from the yesterday, like you've been to Hawaii. <laughs> all right. Roy, you know what I'm saying, man. I, I got a cold. Um, got trying to get a cold go away. Trying to get a cold to go away. Uh -huh. Well, don't give it to anybody else here. Okay. <laughs> right behind you, Jeff, Mary Lou.
Go ahead, Mary Lou. I'd like to ask for prayer. Um, the kid's mother is trying to get them after two years, and we have to go to court June the 7th, and I'm just leaving it up to the Lord because emotionally she is not stable. Okay. Thank you. Pray for that situation for Mary Lou. All right. Thank you, fellas. Bring those up here. We'll have prayer and uh, have our 15-minute radio broadcast lesson this morning, all right? So you'll have to listen fast, and we'll get through this in hopefully 15 minutes, all right? Father, we thank you now for this morning, and thank you, Lord, for each one that's gathered together here today. Thank you for the good breakfast today, and again, Lord, for those who came early and, and prepared the meal so we could enjoy it today. Lord, we're bowing now at the beginning of uh, our class here. Lord, you heard the blessings, and you heard the prayer request today. Some need your healing touch upon them in a, in a very special way. And Lord, we're asking for you to be the great physician. And I know that as we've studied on Wednesday nights, you specialize in the difficult cases. And Lord, we have some difficult ones and we're asking for your touch to be upon them. Protect these dear missionaries over in India. Be it Brother Yoder in India as he ministers there. Thank you for the good results that we're hearing and for the help he's been to the pastors that are there and to those who are in the Bible college there. And we pray you'll continue to watch over him and give him a profitable time uh, while he's there. Uh, Lord, we pray for others this morning who uh, need your guidance and need your wisdom in their life. And I, I pray you'd help in these situations as well. Now, Lord, bless our class. And, and as we open up your word and we look at this man named Abel, that you'll help us to glean some things that'll that'll help us in our Christian walk. And Lord, I pray you'll bless the other classes as they meet now this morning as well. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, take your Bible and go to Genesis chapter 4, please. Genesis chapter 4. Most of us are familiar with the little story of Cain and Abel. First two brothers in the Bible and also the first murder in the Bible. Uh... Abel, of course, is mentioned in Hebrews 11, which is God's hall of faith. And uh, we're going to glean a little bit from Abel's life here this morning. The Bible says in Genesis 4 and verse 1, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. All right, we'll stop there for now and let's get your paper filled in. All right, number one is simply this. Abel was a sinner. Was Abel a good man? Yeah, as you would say good, he would have been a good man. Uh, not one bad statement is found about him in the Bible. Uh, everything that's said about him is positive and good, but he was still a sinner because the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, every, he was still a sinner who needed to be saved to go to heaven. Uh, nobody goes to heaven without salvation. Uh, nobody goes to heaven without being born again. Uh, born again is a spiritual birth. Everybody's had the physical birth or you wouldn't be here. All right. Uh, I like what Ronald Reagan said about abortion. He said, I found that everybody who's for abortion has already been born. And uh, that's very true. Uh, and those, uh, it, it, listen, we've been born physically, 
but you have to be born spiritually. And that is by receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior. So Cain, or Abel, needed to be saved. Uh, as by one man, sin entered into the world. Who was that one man? That was Adam. So death came, and, and so sin came upon all men, and death came upon all men uh, for Adam. That's why all of us have that sin nature. We're born with that. Uh, all of us, if the Lord doesn't come back, we're going to die. Uh, that's just the, the, when sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. And it's working on our bodies all the time. That's why we know that, you know, the eyes get a little dim. We got to put these things on. Uh, it's letting us know uh, that we're not going to get out of here alive, okay? We're deteriorating. And uh, sin is taking its toll. And eventually it will bring death. All right? Same with Abel. And so... He needed a sacrifice. Now look at number two on your paper there. Abel's name means that which ascends. A-S-C-E-N-D-S. -E ascends. Or that which goes up. All right. Uh, similar to what the Bible says a vapor would do. Vapor appears for a little time and then vanishes away. What? It goes up and all of a sudden it vanishes. And uh, here's a man whose name implies his concern for heaven. His concern for eternity, if you will. Consider that with Cain's name, which means acquisition. Cain's name means acquisition. Cain was probably guilty of breaking 1 John 2 and verse 15, where the Bible says, Love not the world, neither things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. How do you know, he loves, how do you know someone loves the world? They want the things of the world. And uh, boy, do we like to accumulate those things. Okay, uh, you don't think so? Walk, well, just drive down any road, and you find storage places. You know what's in there? All the stuff people bought that they can't keep in their house. And uh, and we have we have bigger houses now than we've ever had in the history of our country. Uh, there was a day some of you even grew up in houses where you know you had a, a living room, a kitchen, a hallway, and the bedrooms, and there was a hall bathroom, and uh, that's how you grew up. And uh, air conditioning, what was that? Uh, you know, you open the windows up and you, you maybe put a fan on yourself at night and that was your air conditioning. And uh, that's all you had. Uh, that was life. And uh, now we have so many rooms and so much stuff and sometimes the garage is full and people can't even put their vehicles in the garage and they have so much more stuff. They got to go down and rent one of these storage facilities. What are we doing? We're just accumulating things. But we understand that that's acquisition. And uh, Cain was guilty of that. And, and we, the Bible warns us that our treasure is to be laid up where? Yeah, in heaven. Uh, that's where we lay it up. We, we put it up there where we don't have to worry about anybody stealing it. Don't have to worry about anybody breaking in and taking it. Don't have to worry about it corrupting or getting old or uh, something happening to it. And so what we can do as Christians is we send prayer. We send our money. We send souls to heaven ahead of us. There, there are folks who are in heaven today who the Lord allowed me the privilege to share the gospel with and they received Christ as their Savior and they've passed on. They've gone to heaven. Uh, they got there ahead of me. And, uh, but I got to send that on ahead. The Bible talks about how the prayers that we give. Uh, God keeps them. Uh, up in heaven there are things there that we that the Bible says when we give God lays that up when we, we, we give to the Lord he lays that up and uh, it's there to meet us when we get to heaven alright number three Abel gave a proper offering to the Lord because he was a sinner because he knew he wanted to go to heaven he had to give a proper offering to the Lord the Bible says here that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and Abel brought, verse 4, of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And so Cain brought the work of his own hands. Cain was a tiller of the ground. He was a farmer. And, and so he had some crops and he brought the work of his hands. The, the first argument in the Bible was over how do you approach God? Do we come with what we do? Do we come with what our best is? Or do we come with a sacrifice? Do we come with a lamb? Do we come with blood being shed? How do we approach God? And that was the very first uh, argument in the Bible between Cain and Abel. Uh, some today think, well, I come to God because I got baptized. Or I come to God because I have church membership. 
or I come to God because I've done good deeds. But none of that is acceptable in God's sight. None of that will take away our sin, you see, that the penalty of sin is death. And so the only thing that can take away that penalty is there has to be a death. And so uh, here was a lamb that Abel offered. It was the firstling, notice it says, of his flock and the fat thereof. Several things to notice here about his offering. It was a lamb. It was a lamb. First year lamb. And, and it would be without blemish and without spot. Picturing the Lamb of God that would take away the sin of the world. Later on, God would tell, tell uh, Moses when they're getting ready to leave Egypt, you're going to take a lamb of the first year without blemish, without spot. You're going to kill that lamb and you're going to apply that blood to the doorpost of your house. And uh, they, he said, this is going to be a Passover. The death angel is going to see that. He'll pass over you and your house won't lose your firstborn because of the blood of the lamb on your doorpost. And, and so it was known as the Passover. And he said, you're going to keep this as an ordinance forever uh, in, in Israel. And so they do that. And so here's a lamb. That's why Israel, all through the ages, they always on the Passover would take that lamb and kill it. And, and then they would roast it. And they would eat that lamb with the fat thereof. And they would put the blood on the doorpost. And uh, again, when Jesus came and John the Baptist stood on the shores of Galilee, and he announced all of Israel, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. They knew what he was talking about. Here's God's Lamb that won't just take away our sin for a year, won't just take away our sins for a while, he'll take away our sin forever. This is God's Lamb. And Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross. And he died for us. Amen. He took our place. God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died as our sacrifice. And that's what Abel brought. Now, it's interesting. How do you think Abel knew to bring the lamb? Who would have told him that? Had to be mom and dad, didn't it? Uh, mom and dad knew when they sinned in the garden, they tried to cover themselves with the fig leaves, right? And that didn't work. And so God killed animals and shed their blood and took the skin of the animals and clothed Adam and Eve. And they knew that the blood had to be shed of an innocent sacrifice. And so they taught that to their sons. Abel received that teaching. Cain didn't. Cain refused it. We'll, we'll go on. It was the first of the flock, the firstling of the flock. And that's important because what that what that shows us is the Lord wants the first of your life. The first of your life, that's your youth. It's good to serve the Lord in your youth. God wants the first part of your month. God wants the first part of your week. That's why Sunday is the first day of the week. I know in the world's eyes, it's the week end. And they make Sunday the last day of the week. But the truth is, you look on your calendar. What's the first day of the week? It's Sunday. That's when the week starts. And so why are you in church on Sunday morning? Because we're saying, God, you're first in my week. You're first in my week. He ought to be first part of your day. Start your day out with God. Uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. God always deserves first place. That's why the tithe is the first fruits of all our increase. It's the first, first part of our money. God always gets first place. And then it was the best as well. It was the best. That's what it meant by the fat thereof. And you can, we won't have time to turn there today, but you look at Exodus 12 and also Exodus uh, 29. And there's several verses there talking about what to do with the fat thereof and how that's important. Uh, the fat was the best. Boy, that, that encourages some of us, doesn't it? And, um, but that's another message to be dealt with. All right? So it was a proper offering to the Lord. And, and Cain had that opportunity. Uh, and this is what verse 7 is. God talks to Cain. And he said, well, you know, in verse 6, why are, you, why are you wroth? Why are you upset? Why is your countenance fallen? If you, if you do well, you'll be accepted. But if you don't do well, notice what he says here. Sin lieth, and literally the word is croucheth at the door. And notice, unto thee shall be his desire, 
and thou shalt rule over him. I believe, I believe God had a sacrifice right there waiting for Cain to offer. His desire will be to you. Whatever you want him to do, you can do to him. And you can do well and be accepted. But Cain refused that. Wouldn't do it. And so he wasn't accepted by the Lord. And then he ends up going out and killing Abel. Number four, Abel was killed by Cain. He was killed by Cain. Now you understand this. He was killed even though he did right. So he says, well, just do right and everything will turn out wonderful. You know, tell that to John the Baptist. He did right. And he got his head on a platter. There's many down through the ages that did right and got burned at the stake. They, they, they paid the ultimate price. Stephen did right and they stoned him to death. All right? But you still do right. You do right in God's sight, even if it costs your life. Christians... Christians who live for Christ will suffer persecution. Persecution is, is not always stoning or death or anything like that, but it can just be outside pressure. Pressure against a Christian. And every all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You say, well, I don't feel any persecution. Then maybe you don't fit the first part of that verse. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. 2 Timothy 3.12 Abel then pictures for us the spiritual man. Cain, the fleshly man. Just as the flesh, that would be Cain, fought against the spirit, that's Abel, in their day, so it is in our day. Every believer, every Christian has a Cain nature and we have an Abel nature. You have a fleshly nature, the old nature, and you have the new nature. If you receive Christ your Savior, you have a new nature. You have the Holy Spirit of God living in you. And what our job is, is to feed and exercise the new nature and starve the old nature. So which nature wins? It always, isn't always the good part of you that loses or the bad nature that wins. It's the one you're feeding. That's the one that wins. That's the one who gets stronger. And the one you starve will get weaker. And so you feed your new nature and starve the old nature. And that's where the victory is. Well, Abel, there's a lot more to be said about him, but that's kind of the, the quick version of him, and uh, hopefully that's been a help to us this morning. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, take the truth here this morning, and thank you for Abel. Lord, we could take time to go to Hebrews and some other places where it speaks of him, and, and uh, Lord, what a great testimony he had. Thank you for his willingness to follow his parents' instruction to offer the blood sacrifice that was necessary. And Lord, he's, he did it by faith. And we'll meet him again one day when we get to heaven. I pray that you'll help us to walk by faith and not by sight. Help us, Lord, to feed the new nature, not the old nature. Help us to die to the flesh and feed the spirit. And Lord, if there's any who have never received Jesus Christ as their Savior, I pray that today would be the day they would trust him and they would understand what it is to know Jesus Christ and to have life eternal. Bless our service to follow now this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to take about 14 minutes and uh, we'll have a break. We'll begin right at 1030 with the morning service. You're dismissed till then.